In this movie, we'll look at the 2D features of texture painting in Photoshop. And this will work with any version of Photoshop because we're not utilizing the new snazzy 3D features. We'll start by opening up the UV snapshot that we created. File open. It's in the current project, Photoshop. Here it is, Fuselage UV Layout. Now it's open, let's rename this transparent layer here. Double click that and I'll name it Wires. And now immediately save this out to a Photoshop document. File, Save As. And into that same folder, we'll save a file called Fuselage Layers. Dot PSD. From save as type here, we'll choose Photoshop. We've got black wires here, and we can zoom in on that to 100% if we want. Hold down the space bar to pan around the canvas. We can change the color of these wires if we want. Pretty easy to do that. Go into the layer menu and choose layer new fill layer solid color give it a name we'll call it wire color and enable the switch to use previous layer to create clipping mask click OK and then we can pick a color and as you see it changes in the canvas right away now we've got two layers we've got the wires themselves and then this fill here and the wires are a clipping mask if we hide the wires, we hide everything. To change the color of the wires, just double click on this color swatch here. Good, now we've got our UV layout as a template or a guide for the paint. Next, let's create our diffuse channel. We can build that up in separate layers. I'll create a new fill layer. Layer, new fill layer, solid color. Call it diffuse one. Click OK, and then choose a light gray color. Click OK again, and put it at the bottom of the layers stack. And that's our base coat. I want to add some details to this. Let me zoom out a little bit. I've got the zoom tool active. Hold down Alt and click to zoom out a bit. When we unfolded the UVs, we used a constraint to ensure that they didn't move vertically on the page here. And because of that, I can actually draw a rectangle around both of these top and bottom shelves, and the pixels will line up on either side here. So that's what I'll do. I'll create a new rectangle object. Go over here to the toolbox and choose the rectangle tool, and then drag out. That creates a new layer here, rectangle 1. You can double click and rename it Diffuse 2. And that's a non-destructive object. And I can always go into the Properties palette here and, for example, change the color. Change it back. And I've got all kinds of things here, too, like I can change the height. Just click on this H and drag on that, and you can see we're changing the height of the rectangle. I can move the rectangle object in the canvas directly using this tool here, Path Selection Tool. Then I can move that. Let's create a couple more details. Go back over to the toolbox and choose the polygon tool. And I want to go over to the gear and make sure I've got star turned on in this case. And for the number of sides, I'll do seven sides. Click and drag. We get a preview of that star object. Release the mouse. And it just inherited the color that we had from the last fill operation. Let's get in a little bit closer on that. Magnifying glass. Go to 100% or even more. And turn off the wires for a sec. And we can see that it's not terribly great quality. When our texture is finally mapped back onto the object, if we get in really close with the camera, we will actually see the aliasing of those pixels. If we needed an extreme close-up on that vehicle, then we would need to have a higher resolution texture. All right, I'll zoom back out again, hold down Alt and click a couple of times, re-enable that wires layer. Just make a duplicate of this one, double click it, and again, rename it Diffuse 3. Try to keep everything organized. 
I can make a duplicate of this one. Go to the palette menu, duplicate layer, call it diffuse four. Then I can move that using the path select tool. Just click on it and drag it over. You can hold down the shift key and that'll constrain the movement. I'd also like to demonstrate that because of the way we created our UV layout in Maya, we're actually able to use any kind of tool within Photoshop, for example, the text tool, and be sure that it will read correctly on a 3D model. In other words, text will read from left to right. Let's create some text. Go to the text tool. Click and drag somewhere to create a new text rectangle. And choose a font. I'm going to make it bold and pretty large. I've got 36 point type with a black color. Type something in. And that's on its own layer now. We can rotate it as long as that text tool is active and the text box is selected. When I move the cursor near to it, I get a bunch of different transform icons. And then when I hover around a corner here, I get a rotation icon. So just rotate. Once you've started rotating, hold down shift and you can snap. Now I've turned that upside down. And I can resize the box to place the text somewhere. And I can duplicate that layer for the bottom of the jet plane. Select the layer. Duplicate layer. And then with it selected, go back to the type tool, click to select the type box, and then drag. And I resize that type box. Notice that it's automatically snapping to the other type box. Cool, so we've got that. We can also map something onto the stabilizer here. In fact, I can duplicate this layer once again, just select it and duplicate layer. Select the layer that we just created. And then with the type tool active, click to select the type box. And you can see as we move the type box around, we can actually flip the type. So you can just get that placed on there. And duplicate once again, select it, duplicate. Very good. So that's our diffuse layer. We can admire our work now. Turn off the wires and zoom out to fit the screen. So this is a very simple texture paint. And we won't really be able to effectively create, for example, dirt or noise on this surface currently because of our UV layout. So let's re-enable those wires. The issue is that we need to paint across this seam here. A point along this curve corresponds to a point along this curve here. Because of the curvature of this area, we can't really use the clone stamp tool and we can't really paint across that seam very easily in 2D. If we had stretched the texture out to be a square here on both of these, then we could easily map from one side to the other, and that wouldn't be difficult. However, that would cause some texture stretching, and that's what we want to avoid. So we can fix all these problems either by painting in Maya or in Photoshop's 3D features. But this is a good base 2D layer for us to start with. Cool, so we got a whole bunch of diffuse layers. Let's select them all, put them into a group. Go up to the palette menu, new group from layers, and call it diffuse. Let's make a duplicate of that because we want also to have a specular channel. We could have as many different groups as we want here for different components of the material. We could, for example, make a bump section. We could make normal maps and all sorts of stuff. I'm just going to make it diffuse and specular only this time. With that group selected, duplicate it. And call it specular. Make sure it's placed on top of the diffuse layer. 
And then open it up, we need to rename all of these because they're called diffuse one and so on. And I also want to change the colors because this would be a hot pink specular reflection. To make a really clear demonstration, I'm going to just simply have specular color of black and white. So when we get this loaded onto our 3D model, we'll be able to see very clearly that certain areas of the model will be very highly reflective or specular, and other areas will be dull or matte finish, not shiny. For each one of these layers, I'll change their color. Go to the specular one layer, double click that, and set that to fully white. That's going to make it very shiny in that area. Click OK. And then these hot pink ones, I'll double click that and set those all to black, meaning that it's not going to be shiny in that area. On a real jet plane, what we would probably have is another layer in our shader that would be highly reflective coat on top of the base coat. And we're not going to really deal with that in this tutorial. We're just going to do the base coat. Okay, so that's our specular channel. Let's hide the wires once again. And then minimize this specular group. And because I used a non-destructive workflow here, it was very easy for me to make these changes and to create a specular map that exactly corresponded to the diffuse map. However, you can use any tools within Photoshop. You don't have to do it this way. The entire world of Photoshop tools is open to you, of course. Good, now we need to save this. File save. And then also save out separate files for the specular and diffuse maps to get loaded into Maya. With the specular channel visible, file save as. And we're going to save as a .png. And I'll call it fuselage specular. Then hide that so we can see only the diffuse channel. Save as. PNG. Fuselage diffuse. Very good. We can save one more time. Now we need to load those documents into Maya. Let's go to our current project and the Photoshop folder and select these two PNG files and then copy them. I'm right clicking, choosing copy. Go to source images and paste. We can see those icons here. Those are in their correct location now. And we can open up Maya. Here's our model. Select it and open the attribute editor, control A. Go to fuselage blin material. And then go to the color map. Click on the go to input node button here. And we can just browse for a different image. And we want fuselage diffuse. Now that's applied. Deselect the object so we can see that in fact it's been applied correctly. All right, so what else can we do? We can go select it once again, go back into Fuselage Blin, scroll down, we want to add a specular color map. Click to create a render node. It's a file. Browse for the file. Fuselage specular.png. And now that's been applied. We can go back up to our material level. By clicking here, go to output connection. And then we can play around with our specular shading attributes. And you can see in some areas we're getting very high shininess and in some areas none at all. Now you might notice that the type is larger here on the stabilizer than it is on the wing. And that was something I didn't expect. That happened because when we did the Unfold 3D on the tail fin or stabilizer, it changed the size of those shells a little bit. And a small change there has resulted in a pretty large size differential here. If that's a real problem, of course, we can just go back to Photoshop and shrink these down a little bit. Okay, so that's the 2D workflow for creating textures in Photoshop. And in our final movie, we will look at directly painting onto a surface using Photoshop's 3D tools. Let's wrap this up by saving out to a new version.
I've currently got version 4 open. I'm going to increment and save. And now I've saved out texture paint 0005.ma.